It stood the test of time. 118 years since it began as the Board of Commissioners of Currency operating with limited functions and policy scope to the Monetary Authority of Belize in 1976, to its post-independence designation in 1982, the Central Bank of Belize. 2022 marks 40 years since the authority's evolution into our Central Bank, guided throughout by the provisions of the Central Bank Act. Section 6 of the Central Bank Act explicitly tells you what the objective of the central bank is. And it speaks to stability of the exchange rate, it talks to stability of the financial system. The key function of the bank has been maintaining Belize's peg to the US dollar since May 1976. That fixed exchange rate has served us well. It has been the anchor for stability in terms of our trading. So there's certainty in terms of pricing. And that one's income can be reliably projected in doing business. The fixed exchange rate has been key in price stability in small open economies like Belize. You want to give the Belizean public the assurance that the money you have in your wallet is worth the, what, it is, what is written on it. You don't want to wake up one day and find that the $100 you got no worker worth a hundred dollars anymore. And bear in mind... But the guys you're importing from don't want to be paid in Belize dollars. But printing Belize dollars does not give you, you can't print foreign money. Another major function of the bank is being the sole issuer of currency in Belize. When we used to come currency, you used to do it manually. And when you finish, at the end of the day, your hand smells from this money. Indeed. The operational side of the central bank is about the issuance of currency, ensuring that Belize dollar notes and coins are available at financial institutions. And within the context of the government's economic policy, remember that... The central bank is the government's bank. The central bank provides banking services to the domestic banks as well. For example, services such as the transfer of funds, once done by Telex, now uses the international SWIFT system and you send a telex, please this move this amount of money to pay this amount of money owed to so and so and so. So then we put the SWIFT in place. Along with the operational side of the bank, there is the economic intelligence arm, which includes the research and regulatory function, both critical in steering Belize through the economic challenges that life's ebbs and flows inevitably bring. Like the 1980s global recession, Shortly after the bank's establishment, Belize, like many other developing economies, was adversely affected with high interest rates, inflation, and low rate of growth, mainly due to low prices in the international market for its major export, sugar. The country was further challenged with the reality of running low on foreign reserves at that time, leading to a one-time only standby loan agreement with the IMF in 1984 for 14 million Belize dollars. And even then, it was for the lowest rung of such a facility. For its part, the central bank responded by tightening monetary policy, such as increasing the minimum lending rate and dampening import demand, which assisted in stabilizing the economy. We have never gone back to the IMF since then. Then there were the highly accommodative policies and rapid debt buildup in the mid 2000s. The central bank rose to the forefront in responding to this pressure on the foreign reserves position. Today, the central bank can also be proud of its building of internal capacity and consolidating structures, particularly in joining the worldwide transformation from manual to digital. That transformation from pencil and worksheet to know where we can have computerized spreadsheet and everything is just input it and we have a final report more efficiently. Efficiency, of course, must be coupled with accuracy. No less has been the central bank's careful nurturing of stakeholder relationships, critical in ensuring data integrity and building the information to compile the four main sets of statistics the central bank publishes. First, monetary accounts, information from the financial sector, 
Second, balance of payments, exports versus imports. Third set of information is the fiscal data and that relationship with the Ministry of Finance developed over time. And for the fourth set of data, real sector, the bank relies on the various industries and the Statistical Institute of Belize. Today, assurance in the central bank is further cemented by its routine maintaining and monitoring of the financial sector for optimal performance, such as was the case more recently with the COVID-19 shock to the economy, leading to the bank's monetary and macroprudential policy measures in addressing the real economic strain. The central bank in its regulatory toolkit can issue practice directions to tell the bank how it should treat loans so the central bank can say okay you don't need to take further action in these three months but extend it out. Beyond the issuance of practice directions, central bank these days is confronted with the phenomenon of de-risking. And we were the hardest hit out of the Caribbean. We lost 83 percent of our correspondent banks and we're looking at domestic banks and we're also looking at the international banks who are licensed in Belize and the central bank's role really and truly is to minimize the perception of risk and the actual risk which may exist in the adoption of technology. Now, risk perception is, is not only uh, the responsibility of the central bank because it's a jurisdictional risk that in, involves every single one of us across the Belizean um, um, economy and space. So you don't allow these transactions that our correspondent banks are worried about to pass through the, through the system. De-risking. It's why declaring source of income and other compliance measures are required for starting a bank account and applying for foreign exchange. As the bank applies monetary policies based on the economic environment, it continues to cultivate relationships both at home and abroad. We're seeing now evidence where um, different uh, banks might be interested in the U.S. in establishing relationship with domestic banks in Belize. So there's hope, there's optimism, and we see the work that we have put in for seven, eight years since the de-risking phenomenon played, um, uh, hit, the, hit the shores of Belize. Uh, we're seeing that work um, paying off dividends now. Today, the bank continues to maintain a stable currency, aligning its regulatory framework international standards and promoting credit conditions conducive to the economic growth of Belize. Increasing financial services are expanding, including the licensing and oversight of new payment services like the digital wallet and encouraging domestic capital market development. Of course, a modern financial system must be supported with the proper technology platform. Now, with the introduction of our automated payments and securities settlement system, which is abbreviated apps, most of these things occur online. So when we adopt a technology, it's because we have done the homework, we have done the research, we have minimized the perception of risk, and we have implemented controls to safeguard your money. The most basic of financial services, a bank account, is the start without which then you can't do no transaction. We are living in a monetary system so that whatever economic activity that takes place in a country is measured in money terms. Indeed, a building block of economic development is having individuals being fully equipped to manage their financial lives and make use of quality, affordable financial services. We started what is a very robust, comprehensive financial inclusion and literacy project in educating the public um, on financial transactions. And educational outreach is not new to the bank, whether it's the original Know Your Money radio shows or the more recent You and Your Money public awareness campaign. Additionally, the central bank continuously builds the competencies of its staff. The bank has invested in its staff in providing training for the staff. The, the asset is our staff. It's a mandate to train our staff so that we're able to deal with not only local issues, but all the external issues. We have no control over what the external markets do. 
We are constantly monitoring what is happening in external markets, preparing ourselves to deal with whatever comes at the central bank. The bank takes its regulatory responsibility seriously. Inclusive enforcement of actions and issuance of practice directions that protect financial systems during times of natural disaster or social unrest. So making sure that records are properly kept, that cash is um, placed at the central bank, enough for you to restart your operations again. And that there is no, there is no impact or loss of savings for those depositors and customers to which you serve. As the first quarter of this new millennium moves on, the bank continues to guard that bastion of all stability. And stability is built upon solid foundations. To just look at this building and think about where we came from. Years ago when the central bank was scattered across Belize City. And throughout the years, the bank has kept up its social responsibility contributing to various aspects of Belizean life. Central Bank, from its 1977 Monetary Authority's creation of a central pool for equitable foreign exchange access to today's digital highway created for safe, secure, and reliable online banking. And with a staff of 209 from just 21 in 1982, what does the central bank veteran say is essential for a healthy financial system? Well, without a doubt, it is the confidence that all of these players have in the central bank. We know that everything we do is, is based on our mission, which is to promote the stability of monetary and financial systems for the well-being of Belize. So, as the central bank marks its 40th anniversary, whether you are 20, 50, or 90 plus years old, you can state. I have every faith in the Central Bank of Belize.